Well, we're all trying to stay healthy and safe during the coronavirus pandemic, but it's extremely challenging for expecting moms. Leslie Spoon talked with a doctor to find out some of the protocols that are in place locally. Of course, having a baby is supposed to be an exciting time, but with the coronavirus pandemic, it could be terrifying for expectant mothers. So today I'm joined by doc Dr. Robert Maupin, an OBGYN from LSU Health. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, there's a lot of stuff floating around out there. One thing I'm hearing is that dads or partners are not allowed in the delivery room just because, you know, all the security measures with the coronavirus. Is that your policy? No, that's not the policy at the birthing hospitals that, um, that we're taking care of mothers presently. In fact, I participated in a delivery earlier this week um, and had a, a chance to interact with both the mother and her partner. So um, what we're doing right now is having one person attend the delivery process. So that can be partner, another immediate family member, but one person is designated to accompany the mother. So we really don't want our moms having to come in and have that wonderful experience by themselves. Um, so yes, we do allow a partner to attend with the mom. If the pregnant, pregnant mom contracts COVID-19, I've also heard that as soon as she gives birth, the baby's whisked away and they can't see each other for, for two weeks. And I mean, that's just heartbreaking. Is that true? It, they, so it's important to kind of review what, you know, what we actually do in terms of some immediate protocols versus the larger picture. So um, in the short window of time, uh, in terms of medical evaluations and protections, um, at the hospital level, there may be a, a brief window or a window or period of time where there's going to be a separation for mom who actually has been proven or shown to be infected. However, um, that doesn't mean that when we look at a two-week window, that we're actually looking at an extended separation. What we are recommending in that circumstance is that there are some very strict precautions in terms of the interaction between mom and baby, because we do know that that's a window while the mother is still symptomatic, um, where there may be an opportunity to pass the infection to the newborn. Um, right. So masking, um, using gloves, using you know, frequent hand washing, and other measures to protect the infant uh, once, the, once the family goes home, those are the things that we're recommending, um, but not uh, an absolute separation. Um, and some of those things are also important when we think about breastfeeding. Um, we do recommend that um, one of the safest approaches until the mom recovers may be to pump um, and to use pump breast milk um, at the outset. However, um, both the CDC and World Health Organization have uh, endorsed some safe routines that may allow some uh, some ability for mom to actually directly breastfeed. But again, it's going to be using, you know, very, very strict approaches to protect the infant, um, including masking and hygiene so that we minimize exposure because we just don't want our newborns uh, to have to, to suffer with the coronavirus infection. All right, and we only have about 30 seconds, but I know the newborn that was um, born to, a mom had COVID-19 in Baton Rouge. She, it forced her to go into premature labor. She had the baby, the baby died a day yet later. Um, was tested after death for COVID-19, did not have it. Um, so there's not really a whole lot of research out there, but one research um, article in the Lancet from February said that pregnant moms don't, um, a lot of times their babies are born virus free. What are you hearing? Uh, that's consistent with the best available uh, research and information to date. Um, we have not seen, uh, as, we, as has occurred in other infections, that there's direct passage of the coronavirus uh, in utero uh, okay. during the birth process. Um, the window of risk would be as a newborn post-delivery again through adult exposure. But one thing that's very reassuring is we're not seeing evidence to date um, that we're seeing a direct passage during the pregnancy process. Um, and so we're very grateful that that's the experience we've had so far. And Dr. Maupin said they're doing a lot of televisits, but towards the end of your pregnancy, you have appointments almost weekly, and it's really important to see your doctor in person. So what his office is doing is they're spacing out those appointments so there's not as many people in the waiting rooms and walking around the offices, and the appointments are patient only. So the mom's not allowed to bring anybody with her to the appointment. Sheba? Yeah, Leslie, I'm sure that's a tough situation for anyone expecting a baby right now. So glad you got them some real information, though. So hopefully that calms their nerves just a bit. Thank you.